about to join Don Newen, co-host of Cowboy Logic Radio, and Denise Simon, host of the Denise Simon Experience, for a weekly situation report or sit rep. 18 hours a day, Denise Simon lives her life as an intel analyst. 18 hours a day, Don Newen lives his life in the world of rock and roll. One hour each day, Newen receives a daily sit rep from Simon. Welcome to the Drive Time Situation Report. Fasten your seatbelt. You are now in Don Newen's car, and he is calling in for his sit rep. Hello. What's up, today, Simon? It's your buddy Don. Hello, Mr. Don. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get right to it. Welcome to the Drive Time Situation Report. My name is Don Newen. I am the co-host of Cowboy Logic Radio. And on the other end of this fantastic conversation that you are about to experience is the ever stellar Denise Simon, the host of the Denise Simon Experience. I am coming to you Right now, I'm coming to you live. Now, by the time you're listening to this, it's probably going to be a recorded episode. But I am, I am coming to you from my personal vehicle. I'm driving home late after a long day at work, and I've called into my intelligence guru, Denise Simon, who's hopefully going to bring me up to speed on everything that happened today in the world while I've been spending all day in my little world of rock and roll. So without any further ado, Denise Simon, please timestamp the show so everybody knows when this thing is taking place. (laughs) It is 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the 28th of August in the year of our Lord, 2018, and a primary election day in three states, I think. Well, I didn't even know that because I have had zero time today to follow any news and quite frankly i'm not getting anything throughout the day and by the time i get home at night i'm pretty hammered and the last thing i want to read about is michael cohen or any of this other crap lanny davis that uh that i gotta read about um before we get started denise simon yesterday august 28 8 27 93 At about 8 o'clock in the morning, my oldest son was born, Lee Nguyen, and he had a birthday yesterday. Whoa. And uh, so a happy birthday to my eldest son, Leland Alexander Nguyen. So back to you now, Denise, that I got that out of the way. Yes, you did. 25, quarter of a century old, 25 years old. She's a winner. (laughs) he officially is working for Star Coaches. It is so damn cool to have one of your kids working with you in your industry, in your career. So it's a big year for Lee Nguyen and for his proud daddy. So congratulations on all of that. Yep. Yep. So let's, uh, let's bring myself and all of our valued listeners up to speed on what's going on. So I'm going to let you take it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to nudge you in any direction until later on in the show, if you haven't answered something I need. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Before we get started, you know what You know what I was able to determine uh, what? this week on Cowboy Logic Radio? What's that? Siri can sometimes, and I, I emphasize the word sometimes, give me information quicker than you do. Oh. Okay. Because during a Cowboy Logic show, I said something, because I mute my phone, obviously, for a radio show, but I said something that triggered Siri. And out of nowhere, she started going, yes, Don, how can I help you? And so I decided to ask her a few questions, like, how old is Melania Trump? How old is Melania Trump? Do you know? No, don't care. 48 years old. Siri had that in a matter of seconds. Cool. And then I asked her, I asked Siri, I said, hey, Siri, how much does Donald Trump weigh? 
bing, she had it right there. Didn't even have to think about it. So, Simon, you have competition, and, and her name is Siri. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the immortal words of the uh, numb nut Chris Cuomo, let's just get after it. Well, I, I, let's go all the way back to January of um, 2017, shall we? <clears throat> sure. I'm there. Um, I, I've written a, a, a piece for Political Vanguard that I hope it gets published up here rather soon. But I'll go ahead and, and go through it tonight with you and the audience. Because something struck me today, and it's it's just been sticking with me, so I had to get it on paper, which I did. And I've titled this piece, The Peaceful Transfer of Power, Not. Now, remember... Uh, exactly, exactly. Thank you for doing that. We were supposed to have a peaceful transfer of power. That is what we do. And so Nancy Pelosi congratulates Donald Trump on November the 9th of 2016, and she said she prays for his success as the peaceful transfer of power is the cornerstone of our democracy. Well, <laughs> that transfer of power did happen, but it's hardly been peaceful. It's been riddled with concocted stupidness ever since. And shall we start off with, because I tend, I, we have short memories, with Disrupt J20. Remember that one? I do indeed. Hey, and now, hey, speak, hold on. Speak for yourself when you say we have short memories. <laughs> um, Back to you. And then we have people like some kind of sports idiot over there at ESPN who decides to go on a rant on Donald Trump. <clears throat> um, then we have Maxine Waters, who in Peach 45 we hear daily. And so then my next statement goes like this. You can only serve one master, and that's the American people. We are the masters. But let's go on. We have the members of the White House Press Corps. And if you ever sit through one of those, regardless of who's at the podium, it is embarrassing and as contentious as any exchange you will ever see on television uh, that doesn't have some kind of a rating other than G. <laughs> you got and the hold new. On, hold, hold on right there. I don't ever recall it being that way in the, in the past administrations. No. Am I correct? No. I mean, was... nowhere near as vile. Then you have the New York Times and the Washington Post. And I get both of their emails every day, sometimes more than once a day. Um, and <laughs> I have to admit, all I, I don't, there, there's a paywall to both of them. You get so many free articles, and then you got to start paying for it. Well, I'm not about to do that. But I just look at the, you know, every once in a while, I'll just skim the headlines or the title of the article. And you automatically know where it's going to go. I mean, and it's not even a factual piece. They're not reporting on something to do with Iran or Syria or the Department of Labor. It's opinion, it's opinion, it's opinion. Uh, it's conspiratorial, it's scandalous, it's false, and it's, it's critical. I'll say again, you can only serve one master, the American people. So then we go on to people like April Ryan, Jake Tapper, Jim Acosta, John Brennan, Rachel Maddow. Oh, oh, oh wait, we got Mika and Joe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. okay. I'll say it again. You can only serve one master, the American people. But wait a second. We have others out there. Tom Steyer, Bill Maher, Robert De Niro, Al Green. Amy Klobuchar, Kirsten Gillibrand. Remember all those people? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw Al Green, Al Green last night running his mouth. Mm hmm Now, I will admit, Donald Trump is hardly an eloquent speaker. 
and he doesn't have any kind of political grooming. We all get that. Um, so we don't have to debate any of that. But he has made promises, he's made pledges, and he is working pretty diligently to have them come to realization. Uh, a lot of it's being stopped in court. Some of the things he's overpledged, he's had to walk back because it just isn't going to happen. But there are very many conditions that this cat is working on real hard to happen. And every one of these people that I've, I'm mentioning all through this little diatribe of mine, the Bill Mars, the Robert De Niro's, the Amy Klobuchar's, the John Acosta's, and, you know, all the rest of them. And the, hundreds, and the hundreds and hundreds you didn't mention, like <laughs> Michael Moore and Rosie O'Donnell and, you know, everybody on the view. I, I, can't, I can't even mention them all. I would, I'd be up to, you know, 7,000 words. Exactly. Okay, but where, where we are now, instead of giving the man a hat tip for where the unemployment is and giving the man a hat tip that, you know, manufacturing is, is happening, um giving the man a hat tip because we are redoing some trade deals. I will say I'm not very happy about this whole NAFTA thing because we have to spend $78 billion subsidizing the farmers because he blew that up. But anyway, uh, they're just being petulant. And so if they're petulant, Trump is petulant. So we have a a, a pity party going on between <laughs> government and and between media. I'll say yeah, it again. Gotta, uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Say it again, because I know what you're going to say. Say it again. You can only serve one master, the American people. Correct. Correct. Now, in November of 2017, there was a secret meeting in Carlsbad. It was a three-day conference that was paid for by George Soros, and it was headlined by Nancy Pelosi. The Democracy Alliance, which is a left-wing organization with some pretty deep pockets, also helped fund this thing for a safe space for the donors and the activists. And there was a 38-page 38 38 page conference program, okay? And there were these breakout sessions because people were assigned to do certain things going forward because uh, coming out of this, we had some new hashtags that were launched. And the biggest one is resist. Remember that one? Yep. We, also, we also had attendees Still like... Still see it. Like Van Jones. Awesome. Van uh -oh. Jones showed up. Nira Tandon showed up. Cecile Richard showed up. You know. Hold, this on, is... hold on a second on Van Jones. Van Jones showed up at 3 o'clock in the morning the night of the election. The early morning hours of the day after the election. Van Jones showed up. And that's when he warned America that they would have to look their children in the eyes in the morning when they were eating their cereal and tell them how afraid they were of their children's future. Because and there was a need to be white lash. It was all in exactly. And how that this was, you know, that they were going to fight this in the courts. And, the, and then the word impeachment was coming out of people's mouths. And you know this, Denise, before he was sworn into office. Well, that's why, that's why I said. Okay, so here come these people. The George Soroses, the Nira Tandons, the Cecile Richards, and so forth. And there's a 38-page program. So they're all marching to this, including the DNC, including, you know, the Democratic, you know, committee in, in um, Congress. What was the date of this conference? November of 2017. All right. Okay. I'll say it again. You can only serve one master, the American people. Now, let's not forget where we are, too, with the whole legalize. We've legalized resistance with these people. That's what they've done. They've, they've recruited and they solicited government officials in high-ranking positions. They concocted a lot of stuff. And then they uh, mobilized people in order to get these things done. Peter Strzok, Sally Yates, Bruce Orr, Stephen Halper, 
John Podesta, Hillary Clinton, Mark Elias, Harry Reid, Lisa Page, Andrew McCabe, Loretta Lynch. There's a whole bunch I left out, but we I, I left out the very obvious names because we just they're just too obvious. And so then we have things that have continued on like Antifa or Cobra or Students Without Borders, you know? Now, here's a fun thing. Because Axios the other day reported that a Republican in Congress, and I guess they decide to remain, rename, remain nameless, but they, they created a spreadsheet. So based on the midterms and wherever it is that we go with these midterms, this is what where the democrats are going to take take if they if they come into power in the in the house and or in the senate okay um this is what the republicans and the trump administration is really bracing for you ready for this they're going to go after his tax returns they're going to go after his family business and the emoluments clause they're going to go after the chinese trademarks in the trump organization because of ivanka they're going to continue with the Russia thing. They're going to continue with uh, Stephanie Clifford and Stormy Daniels. They're going to continue down the path that James Comey's firing, the termination of the U.S. attorneys, which is a standard procedure anyway, Trump proposing the transgender ban for the military, Steve Mnuchin's business dealings, the White House staff's personal email, cabinet secretary's travel abuses, office expenses, and misused perks. Discussion of classified information at Mar-a-Lago, Jared Kushner, Kushner's, I mean uh, Kushner's um, ethics law compliance, EPA board scientific counselors, the dismissal of them, the travel ban, family separation, the hurricane response in Puerto Rico, the election security and hack attempts, and White House security clearances. That's just for starters. We have several months to go. I'll say it again. You can only serve one master, and that's the American people. What I'm trying to do here is impart that media, politicians, all have a responsibility and a duty to serve us. These people are civil servants. Even media, they have a servant duty to report news. Not opinion, news, facts. And they're, and they're in defiance. And we out here are not fighting back like we need to be fighting back. So I would argue again, we didn't have some kind of a military conflict over the George Washington Bridge in, in the Potomac for the peaceful, you know, that the, we didn't have a peaceful transfer of power. But this has been anything but peaceful. Anything but peaceful. So, um, where we are is we have a, a whole nother component, and that is external foreign influences. We've got China that's causing problems. We've got North Korea that's causing problems. We've got Russia that's causing problems. We've got Iran that's causing problems. We've got Mexico that's causing problems. We've got Canada. We've got Britain. We've got South Africa. Do you see where I'm going? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I got a question for you. How the hell is Donald Trump staying focused with all this crap going on? How well, he, I mean, here, here's you, know, you got to give the guy a serious hat tip for accomplishing what he has under these unbelievable obstacles. Well, here's We've the deal. We've never seen anything like this in our lifetime, Denise. Well, we saw it early on in the Bush administration. Um, Not to this extent, we did. Well, I, let me finish, please. In the no. early, in the er, no. I'm just messing with you. In the early part of the Bush administration, he launched a brand new agency, and there was massive resistance to that. And then he launched the Patriot Act. And there was massive resistance to that later on in his administration because of the, of the abuses. But a, what a lot of people don't know is the Patriot Act had all these expiration clauses in it. So they would uh, begin to fade away. That we would get to the intelligence that we needed and then they would go away. 
but Barack Obama came through there and he re-upped all those expiry, expired clauses. And now we have a Department of Homeland Security, one of the biggest agencies that we have. And in some cases, we really do need them, <laughs> after all. Um, but in the case of Donald Trump staying focused, we pay people. There are people on the payroll to keep him in the straight and narrow. That includes his chief of staff, John Kelly. That includes the White House lawyers. Some of them I still question. His National Security Council, which took him a long time to get to, um, which is being led um, by John Bolton, uh, should have been led by John Bolton the entire time. We still have a very large mess over the Department of Justice. We still have are on very shaky ground over at the EPA. We haven't. I haven't seen some major great things coming out of the Department of Education yet. Uh, the Department of Energy has been a little on the quiet side. Uh, the U.S. Trade Representative, and uh, you know that's been obviously working overtime. Uh, you you got the Department of Agriculture, which is in a real mess because of the farm subsidies, because of food stamps, which is all comes out of the Department of Agriculture. And so, but it, it, it took I think Trump a while to get some of the right people there. And that was part of the painful first year of his administration, of which media and the Democrats seized on. Um, then we had, you yeah, know, some of the... Yeah, but hold on a second. You know, another major difference between what Trump is going through and what you stated that Bush went through and the analogy that you made, the comparison you made, Bush didn't have social media. Correct. And that is, that's a major, major difference. Major difference. Well, there was also not what is known as bloggers, of which I'm one, um, during the Bush administration. They weren't really coming into their uh, world and uh, into their realm until the Obama administration. Correct. And I'm going to blame, and rightly so, but it's a good blame, a lot of alternate media and bloggers on Glenn Beck because I think he did the American people a great service on the Glenn Beck show that was aired from five to six and taught us what, how to research and what to look for and use. Yep. And, and so uh, that was probably the single biggest service that, that Glenn Beck ever did. Um, Absolutely. I learned more from that man during that time frame when he was on, what was he on, Headline News? or He, he wasn't on CNN at the time. I think it was Headline News. and uh, Or maybe it was CNN. And then when it, the first year or so that he was at Fox. And then, man, he went off the freaking deep end, in my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to go to break here with the drive time sit rep. we got to give three minutes to the network. And uh, when we get back, I trust that Denise Simon will continue enlightening all, all of us. You are listening to Denise Simon. My name is Don Newen, and this is the Drive Time Sit Rep. Check us out on the web at cowboylogic.us. Hi, thank you for listening. My name is Ron Phillips, and I'm the owner and operations manager of Talk America Radio. It is with great pride that I offer you this 24-7 stream of some of the finest talk radio programming in the country, but I need your support. We are a listener-supported network. That means we need your help to continue to offer the quality programming you're hearing right now. If you're able, please visit talkamericaradio.us and click the Support Us button. Your donation will go a long way in helping us continue to share the American voice. Thank you. This is Denise Simon, host of the Denise Simon Experience. When I'm not debating with Donna Fiducio about politics, I listen to Cowboy Logic Radio. Why, you ask? Because outside of my blog, founderscode.com, and my own radio show, the Denise Simon Experience, Cowboy Logic is by far the most entertaining and informative radio show on planet Earth. Plus, Don makes me feel guilty if I don't listen to his radio show every week. <laughs> 
Hi, this is Donna Fiducia, co-host of Cowboy Logic Radio. For 28 years, I was in the mainstream media, most recently as an anchor at the Fox News Channel. No more. Ladies and gentlemen, the mainstream media has completely failed the American people. Radio networks like Talk America Radio will not fail you. Radio shows like Cowboy Logic Radio will not fail you. Check out the entire roster of over 60 weekly radio shows by visiting TalkAmericaRadio.us. That's TalkAmericaRadio.us. Can we do it again? I like it. <laughs> this is Denise Simon. 18 hours a day, I live in a world as an intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. Intelligence analyst. What I find is reprehensible, what I find is terrifying, what I find is treasonous, 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 what I find is treasonous. The mainstream media has completely failed the American people, failed the American people, failed the American people. Join me for the Denise Simon Experience every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Don New, and I'm talking to you from my personal vehicle driving home late night after a long day at work. On the other end of this conversation is the ever stellar Denise Simon from her concrete bunker located in central Florida at an undisclosed location, armed (laughs) with many, many, many semi-automatic weapons. Denise, uh, let let me ask you if you mind going someplace uh, for a segment of this or for a portion of this last segment. the the tech world and at least the article that i read recently from uh, i think the media research research organization or center um had a pretty compelling article based on a study and some research that they had done in which you've got the voice of conservatives being extremely squelched in social media and in search engines such as google uh twitter facebook youtube uh have you dug into this at all and how big of an uphill battle is this and how valid is the uh media research center's uh study do you think well i have dug into it i've written a couple of articles on it um i've listened to some hearings uh when you had the leadership of those social media um tech companies that have had to be part of a panel in in front of whatever committees um and i think jack dorsey of twitter's got to go back next week um but we've come to find out that they have built in these interesting algorithms and these algorithms are designed to pick up on keywords they're designed to pick up on clicks, likes, shares. Um, and then from there, they become trending. And when you come into a trending situation, then the media picks up on that. And then the media takes it and they'll either one, twist it, or they'll look at it and go, we don't want to report that at all. We don't care what the American people want to read. We're not going to report it. Um, and oh, hey, who is that? Who is that one master that you serve? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so, um, 
Then we have this whole new phenomenon going on titled shadow banning. Well, it's not like your account has gone away. It's just that you yourself can see what you're putting out there, but really nobody else can. <laughs> and others have are you being... Noticed, have you noticed a drop in, in uh, anything that you've got going on social no. media? No. Well, that's good. Well, the reason is, is because I just... I don't take a position on anything. Very rarely will I take a position, unless it is absolutely head-tilting, uh, eyebrow-raising, will I put in some of my own commentary. But most of the time, I'm just reporting facts and telling a story. I'll get something, I'll, I'll go, hmm, don't think I really like that. And so then I'll I'll grab something else and grab something else and try and put it all into context. Something that people really can't argue with me on. I rarely have to argue or get into any kind of social media discussion or fight with readers. Because I'm just putting it out there and everybody else take it where they want to go. Um, but, you know, some, <laughs> sometimes... I, you know, I, I do put in some some political or some commentary, opinion commentary, but it, it it I have not been shadow banned, and I have not been banned. I have not been put into Twitter prison or Facebook jail or any of that. No, I know yeah, I, others. You know, amazingly, I have not either. Now, Donna has received some, uh, you know condescending little messages from Facebook and made it to where, you know, her post was, you know, blocked or, but they, but she's never ended up in jail. Some of our other colleagues uh, in the radio station are um, like Rocky Stucci and then Matt Locke and some of these other guys, you know, they get, they get banned all the time. Mm -hmm. Stucci, Stucci's like, I mean, he's a career inmate. <laughs> hey uh <clears throat> all right so let me let me ask you this do you feel that there is absolute validity to the claim by the media research center that cons the conservative voice is being neutered as best it can yes all right which these private organizations have the absolute right to do they indeed do um which then becomes part of the discussion in Congress. Um, do these tech companies become a utility that need to be regulated? Are they um, are they really media? Because I, they're they're not really reporting anything. In fact, if nothing else, they're censoring. So you can't really call them media. In in the news sense, journalistic sense, it's it's it, they're aggregators because we aggregate for them. We aggregate on a platform. Yeah, they're, they're not aggravating. They're they're aggravating <laughs> aggregators. <laughs> and so we have to determine. I mean, even um, Mark Zuckerberg, when he gave his testimony for two days, one before the Senate, one before the House. It was suggested by, you know, some of the lawmakers um, that he may, that Facebook may need to be regulated. And it was absolutely remarkable because he did not disagree. Yeah, I don't I, really I remember that. I don't want to regulate anything. I mean, I don't want government in their hands. I mean, they just, because they don't do anything well. <laughs> they don't figure it out until 25 years later and how they should have done it well 25 years previously. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me ask you about Bruce Orr. What happened? Uh, didn't he testify today behind he closed did. doors? He did. He did. Anything leak out on that? Well, uh, there were some indications here that there was much more information that the Department of Justice and the FBI had key information that never made it into a FISA warrant. <laughs> like what? Well, we can't know that because it was behind closed doors. 
But we've got House Republicans, and the quote is, are suggesting the FBI withheld key information in their application in order to obtain a warrant. Now, was that the fact that the dossier was unverified? Maybe. Was it, uh, could it possibly have been pieces of the dossier were in fact verified? I mean, we, we don't even know who did what with that dossier. We just know what the media tells us, and we're not even sure that that's even right. Okay? And so, if there's more information, apparently he was rather cooperative, um, but if there's more information there that should have been in the FISA warrants, more than one, or should not have been, uh, or should have been corrected or eliminated or edited or put into context in time and space, that has some of these Republicans very concerned. So the Department of Justice, they're not going to, they, de- they declined to comment on any of these Republicans' assertions that they made after his testimony. And I would also say that as a result of whatever these exchanges were with Bruce Orr, the entire FISA application is probably going to be retooled at some point, which I think probably should be. Are they going to drag uh, his homely-looking wife in there to testify to? Are I have they going to drag Nellie in there? I have not heard that. I have not heard that at all. Man, now, doesn't she look like a school marm, like the worst nightmare of a school marm you could have? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I I can't pass judgment on that because I can't even imagine what people would say about me. So I shut up. Well, they're not going to say that. They Here's what they say about you. Hey, you look pretty good for your age. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> now, there and is someday, some And someday they'll say that about me. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Hopefully. Now, there is some worrisome things that did happen because uh Those like um, uh, Gates or Jim Jordan or a few of the others that were asking some questions, there's some timeline conflicts. So when Bruce Orr uh, was trying to put dates on things, they conflicted with Peter Strzok's timelines or Lisa Page's timelines. So... Automatically, the Republicans are going to go. Somebody's lying, and and <laughs> so we were all, we're already to the lying point. But you know, go, kind of not having notes and calendars and all those things in front of you, actual dates and timelines can get confused if you're going back a couple of years for sure. Well, unless of course you're Donald Trump, and then you're not excused by that. <laughs> exactly. So we don't we don't know necessarily know where this is going to be, but you know there are other people now that are on the list to be called in. Um, one of them is the former lawyer, top lawyer for the FBI, Jim Baker. He's to be called in. Nellie Orr will probably be on the list, um, and there may be a handful of others that uh, you know to kind of put all. But the, 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 we, this problem is, it's a problem. The problem is the problem. And it's, it just isn't, we're not advancing anything. I don't see anything <laughs> being settled. Oh, you, you sounded like Giuliani right then. <laughs> yeah, the truth isn't the truth. <laughs> yeah, the problem is a problem. Okay. All right, well, hold, let's put a pause on things for a second. <laughs> you like that analogy? Simon sounds like Giuliani. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the Drive Time Situation Report, or as we call it, the Drive Time Sit Rep. It's a once-a-week conversation that Denise Simon and I record while I'm driving home from work, and she's sitting in her bunker, and she kind of brings me up to speed on everything I need to know and some things that I don't want to know. She brings me up to speed on those. Now, I want to I want to share with you, those of you that aren't aware of this, uh, those of you that listen every week, forgive me for regurgitating this again, but Denise has a fabulous website. 
It's founderscode.com. Founders with an S, code.com. And if you go to that website, you're going to see all of her work. You can sign up for a newsletter that will pop to your inbox in, in your email every time she posts an article. And the beauty of that is that you can do exactly like I do and save them until you have time to read them. Because there are days when you'll get hit with about five or six of them, and uh, you just got to kind of stockpile them and read them when you can. So at any rate, I do encourage you guys to go to founderscode.com and sign up for Denise's email. It's a way that you can obtain well-vetted, actual, factual information that you can then share in social media, you can discuss it with your friends, and you can do all that with integrity because you know Denise has done all the hard work for you. And for that, Denise, on behalf of our valued listeners and myself, we are grateful to the great work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so hang on a second. Let me check the timer here. We got 12 minutes, girl. So what else okay. are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about the stinger here. And the stinger here is the FBI and James Comey. Because Louis Gohmert, I'm going to say back in the early part of the summer, on a couple of TV appearances and maybe even on the floor of the, of the house, I don't know, someplace, because I heard him say it, but don't know where he was when he said it, that uh, Hillary's private email server was hacked. And I remember it well, and it wasn't by the Russians, by the way. <clears throat> well, now we have what I would say to be some interesting evidence of this, because apparently a Chinese-owned company operating in Washington, D.C. actually did intrude into her email server. I don't want to use the word hacked. Um, but they did intrude. They put a piece of software in there that would, during the entire four years she was Secretary of State, by the way, that would clone every email, every email, every email, going in and out of that server and move it over to their own server. So they didn't take anything. They didn't alter anything. They just mirrored everything and put it on their own server. So for well, the four beauty of this, the beauty of this, Denise, is we have all the thirty three thousand emails. Yeah, we the Chinese will cough it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trump needs to schmooze with them and get that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And and so the big thing now is to find out, and I guarantee you any decent investigative journalist is working real hard right now to find out who the Chinese-owned company actually is that resides and operates in Washington, D.C. So we have code that was embedded into her server. Well, wait a minute. Where did we find, where did we learn about this? Who was it that disclosed that it's a Chinese company that's based in D.C.? Well, um, apparently the inspector general knew more than he necessarily put into the intelligence community inspector general, not David, not, not Michael Horowitz. But apparently he injected it into a report that nobody paid much attention to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the little nugget comments that you make uh, never cease to amaze me. You know, we've got, we've got the Chinese with a company that's based in Washington, D.C., breaching Hillary Clinton's personal email servers for four years it's reported by an inspector general, and nobody cared enough or took the time to read which that includes which in, which includes interestingly enough because that inspector general report every inspector general report 
goes to the committee heads, the respective whatever committee heads in Congress, so they have it. It goes to the heads of uh, germane agencies like DHS or FBI or CIA or NSA or, you know, ABC for that matter. All right. And so two officials with the what is called the ICIG, the Intelligence Community Inspector General, the investigator is Frank Rucker. And he had an attorney that worked with him on this named Jeanette McMillan. <laughs> And apparently there, it was concerning enough that these two cats, Frank and Jeanette, trotted on over to the FBI and said, Hey, irrespective of whether you're reading this report or not, uh, we got the Chinese that are intruding here. Now, I don't know how much they really told the FBI, but... Um, if anybody at the FBI would ask some questions, like did Peter Strzok ask some questions? Did uh, Andrew McCabe ask some questions? Did Lisa Page? Did James Comey? Did any of those of people ask? Like, okay. Of course not. They're protecting the precious. They would never do that. So they did a very deep dive. They found the actual metadata, the data which is at the head of the email and the foot the header and the footer of the email and uh, they you know how they created this courtesy copy <laughs> it goes to a third party a chinese public company operating in washington dc um and they may have gotten in because of the normal uh, to inject this piece of software um by their normal phishing tactics P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G tactics. Hmm. It was a, it's apparently a front company. It's not a technology. This, the Chinese company is a front company. Apparently it's not a, a technology company. <laughs> so, uh, we, we're still trying to find out who it is. Is, is there any legal ties to the United States for this Chinese company that, you know, by a court order, we could go in and seize these files. Well, I guess we'd have to trot on over there. Maybe we can ask Bruce Orr when he goes back to the to his office at the DOJ. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right, you got five minutes. You know, this is this has been a pretty uh, pretty my. Let me rephrase this, De Denise. This has not been a depressing. Like last week. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I got I broke out the vinyl when I got home and laid out the uh, Janice Ian at seventeen song and listened to it. I mean, it was that was a downer last week, Denise. I didn't even feel like eating when I got home. I know. Sorry. Well, <laughs> there there is a a referral form that came as a result of this ICIG. Intelligence Community Inspector General report, and it's called an 811 referral. I have that document. I haven't read it though because <laughs> I've been a little busy, and it's 300 pages. So I'll I'll get to it whenever I get to it. Maybe I'll read it on an airplane or something. I don't know, but um, yeah. <laughs> so. So, well, hey, since you spoke about the airplane, and we've only got about three minutes left here, tell the listeners where you're going to be in case any of them are up in that area and would like to come see you. Because you're making a trip here when? In about a month and a half? Month? Uh, no, um, next week. Two weeks? Oh, next yeah, sorry. Next time, time flies when you get weekly sit reps. <laughs> there is an annual uh, conference, if you will, for radio hosts. And it is held by the Federation for American Immigration Reform, otherwise known as FAIR. And they invite radio show hosts. There's about 60 or 70 of us. And they invite us into Washington, D.C., into this hotel where they have taken a couple of ballrooms and they have partitioned the ballroom into these little radio show booths kind of thing. 
we each have an assignment then they give us a list of all the people that they have invited for us to interview and it's quite the list um, lots of sheriffs lots of law enforcement lots of border patrol um, lots of immigration experts and so I'm very proud to say and I hope it holds that I did score Senator Joni Ernst good and today I scored Tom Homan Tom Homan is just retired after I think 28 years as the head of ice and he has oh, now cool. been he has now been hired as a Fox News contributor so I scored him um, I scored a couple of ranchers that are from Arizona had <laughs> in order to right, schedule well, hold, hold on hold on we've only got about a minute left and there's something I have to share about this illustrious confab that will be taking place in Washington DC last year ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna take us out with this Denise because we're running out of time last year I need to let you all know that on the first day of this Denise didn't really want to wake up as early as she did and join her partner in crime up there, uh, Scott James from WDDQ, uh, Talk 92.1 FM. So she gets up at her leisure at 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was, and she marches down to the, to the exhibition center, and I use that term uh, Reception <laughs> humor. Hall. Reception yeah, desk. Well, in your case, it was an exhibition center. Um, in nothing but her bathrobe that she had in the hotel room, and I think you had your tennis socks on. I had my tennis socks on because I, I have to get up at 3.30 every day to do a 4 o'clock radio show for Tampa, so I had to get up at 3.30. And I normally wake up and I, you know, do it in my boxer shorts and t-shirt. So I showed up in a boxer shorts and t-shirt wearing tennis socks and the hotel bathrobe with an empty coffee cup in my hand. That's right. <laughs> and the and first interview <laughs> was with Michelle Malkin. That's right. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that Denise made and left a lasting impression at the fair convention in Washington, D.C. of 2017, which is exactly why she's coming back in 2018. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us on this week's Drive Time Sit Rep. Please go check us out at founderscode.com and cowboylogic.us. Ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic week. We do this for you, and God bless America.